Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome back to Cornwall and welcome to Myrtle. I'm very excited because we're cooking for you in here today and it feels like forever since we've done one of these videos. So I hope you enjoy it. The cat is currently going mental, running around the van. Ignore. So what with party season fast approaching, I thought that I would be really kind to you today and bring you the best hangover breakfast you could ever require and it's kind of a take on those traditional crispy breakfast potatoes you know the little sauteed ones that are all crunchy on the outside and fluffy on the inside and just mm. so we are mimicking that but we're going to use sweet potatoes today just because we can now if you've ever heard of triple cooked chips or even double cooked chips there is a reason that chefs everywhere around the world go to those lengths to make a triple cooked chip. It's because it gives you the best eating experience. You get this lovely crunchy crust on the outside of the chip. Oh, by the way, I'm talking about French fries for people that aren't English. Just so you know, not a bag of crisps, chips, America, whatever. Anyway, you get this lovely crispy crunchy crust on the outside, the inside of the chip is nice and fluffy and light and so, so scrumptious. So I'm kind of pinching that idea of, in this case, double cooking my potatoes so that we get that lovely crust and that lovely fluffy centre and everyone will be very, very happy. So to mimic that, and because obviously we're cooking in a teeny weeny little kitchen that doesn't have an oven or a microwave or anything like that, I have gone to the trouble of nuking a gigantuum sweet potato this morning so it's like squishy soft oh it's still quite warm how nice uh yeah you basically just want to nuke or oven bake um a potato before you go camping if this is for a camping trip or obviously if you're at home and you just want a nice little sunday morning breakfast that will just ease you back from the land of booze um then yeah just give it a quick cook this one i mean this is massive look it's huge this took about 15 minutes in a microwave. So uh, I put a piece of kitchen paper on the plate in the microwave. I cut my sweet potato because if you don't do that, they will explode and they make such a mess. Ask me how I know. Then you put that on your paper, you nuke for five minutes on high and then you turn it over and you nuke again for five minutes. A normal sized sweet potato is only gonna take 10 minutes. Um, but because this one was a gigantuum thing, I did it for an, I think an extra five minutes, certainly an extra three or four. Now it's nice and soft all the way through. This will make the perfect crispy breakfast sweet potatoes ever. Okay, so say that you're going camping and you know that on Sunday morning, you're gonna be feeling a little bit fragile and you want something a little bit special, but that's really gonna make your hangover feel sweet. Just nuke a couple of these on Friday night before you leave, before you go camping, let them go cold fully, like just at room temperature, and then just put them in a Tupperware box or wrap them in foil or whatever and stick them in your fridge or your cool box or in one of your cupboards that doesn't get too warm in your van and just leave them there. They'll last quite happily for a day or two. And then what we need to do, my lovelies, is we need to chop it up into little bite-sized pieces. So come over here, come on, this way. Okay, so following that line I've already cut for when I actually baked them, I'm just gonna follow that and cut them in half. And then I'm going to go with quite small chunks, I think. You can do whatever size you like. Cut them into strips and then into little chunks. If your end's looking a bit dry and crusty, you can just chop that bit off if you want. Um, I don't really like the look of that, so yes, you're gone. And then I think I will just pop them back into this bowl for a minute while I chop the rest up. Yum, yum, yum. Right, now we've got our nice little bowl of cooked sweet potato chunks. We're now going to do the second bit of the cooking and just going to fry these up. Mmm, what could be better? You could use whatever oil you like to cook your sweet potatoes in, but I'm going to use ghee because this lives in the van and it's just really tasty and yummy. Something questionable in there. I don't know what that was. Ew. Now you do need to wait for your pan to get hot before you put your potatoes in. Anytime you want to cook something and give it a nice golden crust, then you really do need that pan hot before the food hits it. So when your pan feels nice and hot, pop your oil or fat in. Uh, don't be shy with the fat for this one. This is a hangover breakfast. So you've already ruined your liver. You may as well ruin your arteries too. I'm going to turn that heat down because that looks a little bit too hot. And then 
carefully pop your potatoes in, bearing in mind that they're probably going to spit, so be careful. Then get all your potatoes in one even layer and just step back leave them. Another key to getting foods like potatoes really nice and crispy is that once you first put them into that fat you just need to stop and just let them sit there for a while and then that underneath that bottom level will just get nice and crispy and golden. You do obviously want to keep an eye on them you don't want these puppies burning but just be aware that to get that nice crust you really need to learn patience. <laughs> In my last video, I kind of hinted that I had a little challenge coming up that I was going to take you guys along on. And I'm still planning to do that challenge, but I've moved it back until the new year now because there are a few things that needed to happen before I could actually do it. Uh, and I can't get those done quicker than like December, the end of December. So there is an exciting challenge. Well, I say exciting. I'm mildly terrified. It's a very physical challenge that I don't know that I'm <laughs> ready for. I can't really tell you too much about it because I don't want to spoil the surprise. And the reason that today I wanted to bring you a recipe video and the reason that you're going to be seeing quite a few more for the rest of this year is that thankfully my work has gone crazy busy again, which I'm so, so grateful for. Thank you, universe. I appreciate you. Uh, and it just means that I've got less time to spend on filming and editing vlogs. So if it's all right with you guys, I'm just going to bang out a load of recipe videos just so that I don't skip a video like I did last week. I'm really sorry about that. I did have my whole challenge video edited and ready to drop last Friday. But then, like I said, these other things didn't come into place in time and I didn't want to kind of announce it and then not do anything on it for the next three months. So I thought I'd just put that video back, schedule it for the new year or even for the spring whenever I'm actually ready to get this challenge underway. And I know I'm being really cryptic and I'm really, really sorry. I hope you think it will be worth the wait though. It's big, let me tell you that. Right, these potatoes are ready to turn over. Let me turn you round. So as you can see this one here, getting, oh, damn it. There he is, he's getting a nice little bit crispy on the bottom. So we'll just toss these round. They're gonna fall apart a little bit. I don't care about that. Hopefully you don't either. They're still gonna be delicious. And obviously you can do this with regular potatoes, white potatoes, or you can use tinned potatoes. I think we did a sauteed um, potato breakfast back along, didn't we? Using tinned potatoes, just make sure that you dry them first. I'm also gonna season them at this point, obviously with a little bit of Cornish sea salt. I'm not gonna to put too much on because I'm definitely gonna to want to season them again when I'm about to eat them. Because the nice thing about Cornish sea salt is it's all these lovely little crispy chunks of salt. And I really like to be able to actually taste and crunch on them on my food. And I'll also put a bit of black pepper too. You could season them however you like, a little bit of chilli powder, maybe some of your homemade fajita spice mix, whatever you fancy. Make, you can make it different every single time you make this dish as well. Okay, whilst they're finishing cooking, I'm also going to chop a couple of spring onions. Definitely not essential, but delicious. So why wouldn't you? And... It's good to get some greens into your breakfast, people. Oh, oh, really? Yes, I knew that was going to happen. It's like bloody confetti. It's going everywhere. Dang it. Never work with animals, children or camper vans. Yay, I kind of managed to save some of them. Right, I'll turn that heat down. And then the bottom of the pan, that there's some real nice little gnarly crispy bits. Delicious. Now, obviously, these lovely crispy little potatoes are going to be great served with bacon or sausage or baked beans or a fried or poached egg. Obviously, that kind of goes without saying. Um, but what I'm going to serve them with just to make it super duper quick is I've got a little jar of um, mayonnaise here and it's nearly empty. I've just got like a centimetre if that at the bottom and to that I'm going to add some garlic powder just two pinches maybe and then I'm just going to mix oh it's really hardly anything oh, just going to mix that together mm, quick taste delicious and I've got a teeny weeny little pot here which is just as well because there's hardly any mayonnaise to put in here I'm glad I picked up the smallest pot I own that's quite handy. Well done, Jane. You obviously saw that coming. Oh, it's going to be like the tiniest little amount on every bite. Dang it. There we go. 
I don't think I could get any more out of there if I tried. Right, how are we doing potatoes? Yeah, I reckon we're done. Alrighty, let's dish up. Just making sure there's lots of nice crispy bits in there. There certainly is. Oh, this is gonna be good. Now I'll admit it's not the prettiest looking breakfast, but my friends, if you had a festive hangover, I don't think you'll care just how pretty it is. Okay, I'm gonna put my little thing of mayo there, scatter my greenery over the top. Now, as I said, another little feature that you really need is a nice little bit of crunchy Cornish sea salt over the top, because then you'll get those little, just a little bite of salt every now and then, which I freaking love. And there we are, my lovelies. What do you think? Now for a vegetarian breakfast, I think you'll agree that looks pretty damn fine. And you could easily make this vegan by swapping out the ghee for a coconut oil or something, uh, swapping out the regular mayo for obviously a vegan mayo. And I reckon everybody will be happy with that. So let's have a little taste it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to leave you guys because hey, there's a plate of food with my name on. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I've got a couple of ideas for the next few weeks for uh, recipe videos to bring you. But if there's anything you'd like to see me cook in Myrtle in one pot, then please drop a comment down below or message me on social media or email, whatever, whatever your preferred method of contact is. And let me know what you'd like to see me cook in here. Right, that's it from me today. As always, thank you for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you. And as always, please stay safe, keep smiling, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm. don't skip the spring onions on this they are actually an integral part of this fabulous breakfast <laughs>